Hello guys, um, this is Jonathan Stab and in this video I want to um, basically have a look at the new version of Linux Mint. So by the way guys, I did a video about this earlier but because I couldn't actually get into the virtual machine because I was having a few issues but I have fixed the issue and I'll show you guys how to fix the issue as well. So basically, what we have done last time was that we've spoken about what the Linux Mint has added by looking at their documentation and now in this episode, what we're going to be doing is that we're gonna be um, trying out the new features and just seeing how great they are. So if you guys wanna see that video, what I did earlier, then please do so. There'll be a card up in the video, so you guys will be able to open it that way. Okay, let's open up the machine and go to settings. And what you guys need to do is that we need to go to display and turn off enable video isolation because there's a weird bug that when we enable this, um, the screen goes white I don't know why, but people we had reported that same issue, but I I guess that's fine. Well, you know, hopefully they fix this before it does get released. But let's just press on OK, and now you can start it. Because I normally do enable that, um, but because I was having issues with it, I just disabled it. But it should be still pretty much the same with um boot up time, so it doesn't really matter that much. As for the other test out how Firefox works, test out the applications I have um basically included and so on so we're just going to be having some fun we're just going to be messing around in this episode just saying what they have changed in this version because not with every update um that might not have included something they might have hidden something that we don't know about <laughs> okay so right now we should be building up to linux mint um 20.3 Okay, so we're in, and this is how it should look on your run to boot up. This is how it should look. So, as you guys um, know, that they have added a calendar um, widget, so um, we can be able to add a fence over here. So, if I open up calendar, and if I basically want to set up an event, so if I want to go for the 24th and say Christmas, even though Christmas is the day after, but we can just call this Christmas then we can do that and now we can add it and now what should happen is that we should go over here and now we should see Christmas as the date on the calendar over here. So this is how you guys will be able to add um, a fence to the calendar and so on. Okay, so you guys can see these buttons have been changed a lot. So now it looks more modern. So this is how it looks at the moment and this is how it will look very soon. And as I said in the last episode, it does kind of look like sort of GNOME sort of thing because this, it looks more like um, what Ubuntu uses, which makes it look more modern in my honest opinion and makes it look a lot better. Um, okay, so we finished with that calendar widget feature. Okay, let's go back to the Linux Mint logo and these are the applications that they have installed. Now, what you guys will be able to do as well is now we can add some notes so i'm going to show you guys the notes tool which i have added so if you go to notes then as you guys will see um it didn't open okay let me try again okay so this is how the notes application look um now what they have added was that search function and as you guys will see i don't think they had that what the, the search feature included in the last episode i mean this last version so as you guys can see it does not include that version and I better close this I mean, even though you guys can see that it doesn't matter it's just some old key I have so this is basically what they have added and now if we add like two keys um, like this and now if I set the title to be hello okay so once I have hello set up what you guys can do is search up for hello and it should drop this um this note let's close out of it and now we can delete notes. So what they have added was that search function. And they did that also for the actual um, for the video. So if we basically want to watch like BBC News or um, something like that, what we would be using is a tool called, I forgot the name of the tool again, because I'm not very good at that sort of thing, but it's basically a video player, which I, what they have added was that um, tool where you guys will be able to um, here it is, this is the tool, so we can watch TV, and what they have added was that search function, so if you guys wanted to go to, for example, go to TV channels, now they have added that search function, 
and you guys will be able to search up for example sports and what we're going to be showing you guys very soon and that what that should do is show up every sports channel like this and so on so you guys will be able to click onto one of these um shows and be able to watch what you want to watch yeah like that but i'm just going to close it out of this because i don't want to be copyrighted even though she's a face very nice girl okay um i'm going to close it out of this good okay that was good so basically this is a function they have but if we go back over here and if we search up for the same software what we guys guys will see is that we won't have that search function as you guys can see we don't have that feature at the very moment okay let's go back up here and the, what they did was basically change some customizations and they uh, uh, did the search function and they also have added a new software and I basically f um, forgot the name of it but we should find it very easily in the library I think it was actually um, yeah they called it library even though th th on the last one they didn't call that on the documentation I don't I forgot what they called it <laughs> but it's actually called raw library where we go to manage all of the PDF files so um, basically if we go over here about I don't know how this thing works but basically ah we need to download the document ah, okay I see that's pretty cool now what we can do is basically download a PDF document from the internet in this photo machine and basically um, P oh, okay. PDF um, let me just do this PDF document example and then maybe we can just download an example or something like that okay so um, a sample PDF yeah university of that and I don't know if I'm allowed to do this but whatever it's on the net, internet so I guess I can save it to a PDF and now we can save it and now we can save it from here and now if we guys close out this and now um, if we reopen library then what you guys should see is this PDF document hold on I don't know why it's not go back to print save to PDF and now we can save it and I'll put this into document and now save and hopefully it does save okay now let's see if it is saved I don't know how much storage this ISO file gave me though <laughs> alright ah there it is sample.pdf so I do believe yes here it is so guys we'll be able to open it like this and then it should open up so this is like a sample PDF, so you guys are able to scroll through all this and so on and do whatever you want from here. So I think this is actually using another application for some reason, um, help about, and this is using Xreader. So I think this does do load up any um, PDF files that you guys have currently installed on my computer. So let's close our that because we finished for library. And basically, that's all they did. Basically, just added some customizations, added these buttons over here, and so on. So I'm going to go through the main features, I mean, for main updates I have done recently to um to Linux Mint that you guys will find very useful. And now I'm going to test out how YouTube works with this beta version and see if YouTube is playable. So I'm going to go to um okay, it's going to take a while. Okay, I don't want to sign in. Agree. And now if we basically search up for my channel, it gave a reasonable um, RAM, so it should be all fine. Okay, so my thoughts on Linux Mint 20.3. And we can also maximize it if we wanted to. Okay, so that's basically how well um, this this virtual machine can run YouTube videos but because it will be installed on real hardware it will run a lot better so I'm actually am very happy about this release and I'm quite excited for it so um, if I basically want to update the system then we can just do check for updates um, updates and then we can update manager and then we can just search up for any updates if there is any and so on but because I'm doing this in a photo machine um, with an ISO file, that means any changes that I do with this system will be deleted. So if I download any software, any games, 
once I have a power cut or if I shut down my system then it will be lost so do bear in mind that we can't just use the USB stick just to do all activities you may have to install this on real hardware if we've got lots of data to save so yeah I would say that this was a very good introduction to this update um, if you guys want to learn more about it I will add a video I did about it earlier I just want to, get to test out how it works um, let me just press an enter and it should shut down. Okay. So I'm quite excited to um, basically try out Linux Mint 20.3 and, you know, download it once it's available on my system. So once it's available, it should be on for update manager and we should see an upgrade that is available. So if we read upgrade, then it should be a function over here, which I will show you guys once um, Linux Mint 20.3 comes out how to upgrade on the next mint and I will show you guys that video okay if we're kind of new to Linux mint I'll be very happy to show you guys how to upgrade from one version to another easy lemon squeezy anyway guys I'm gonna end this video there please like and subscribe and yeah guys I'll see you next time bye bye